Hey there everybody, Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another new show here on the YouTube channel. This one has been requested by numerous uh, viewers and I decided pretty damn good idea to do for a regular show. So we're going to do that going forward. We're going to call this show Top 10 Songs and each episode is going to be, I'm going to pick a, an artist, a band, and I am going to tell you my favorite all-time top 10 songs from that particular artist. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, what's a good one to start and kickstart this particular show with? And I was like, hey, do I want to pick a like metal band, a hard rock man, a prog man? And I've kind of been in a Genesis frame of mind lately. So I said, why not have our inaugural show, our inaugural episode of this new show be Genesis? So what I've done is I have gone through all the Genesis albums and picked out some of my favorite tracks from each album. It was a pretty long list. As you can imagine, they're one of my favorite bands. And whittled that down, whittled that down to come up with a top 10. Now, I think this top 10 list that I picked here is pretty definitive for me, but there's a, a bunch that are sitting on the periphery that any given week or whatever probably could pop themselves into this top 10 and kick someone out. But I think for now, this is a pretty good list that I came up with here. Um, Basically, all these songs are going to come off of the albums from Nursery Crime through to Wind and Wuthering. So you're not going to see any of the tracks from the kind of poppy era of the band, which probably is not a surprise to any of you. And uh, it's mostly going to be classic stuff. So a good amount are sung by Peter Gabriel, a couple Phil Collins sung tunes from when he first took over the lead vocal slot are going to show up here. So let's get this started. I'm going to go from number 10 to number one. First tune at number 10 is The Return of the Giant Hogweed, which has long been a favorite of mine. Of course, that's from the Nursery Crime album. That's kind of a real quirky, fairly aggressive tune for Genesis with some outstanding, fun vocals from Gabriel uh, and, and amazing keyboards from uh, Mr. Tony Banks, who, for my money, has kind of always been one of the most underrated keyboard players from that classic prog era. You know, most people talk about, you know, the best keyboard players from from the 70s, from those classic prog bands, and, you know, Keith Emerson, Rick Wakeman, so on and so forth, always seem to come up. But I think Mr. Banks never really gets the credit he deserves. He might not be as flamboyant from a solo perspective, you know, playing all these crazy leads and, you know, the big personality and what have you. But I think as far as textures and melodies and just really outstanding different types of sounds. I mean, a really, really underrated player. So Return of the Giant Hogweed comes in at number 10 for me. Number 9, from the very, very underrated Wind and Wuthering album, 11th Earl Amar. Another great example of fantastic keyboard textures from Banks, but more importantly, some great guitar work from Steve Hackett. And ironically, what would be his last studio album with the band, probably contains his best guitar work and most and the most amount of songwriting he had ever contributed to a Genesis album. Uh, another really, really good song with a great vocal from Phil Collins, of course, you know, his second album stepping into the spotlight on lead vocals. Uh, next up at number eight is Dance on a Volcano, which would be the first song on the new studio album, Trick of the Tail, which was his first album where he took over the total lead vocal slot after Peter Gabriel left the band. And another pretty energetic kind of rock in tune with great, more fantastic keyboards from Peter Banks. Great drum work from Phil Collins. One of the really, really underrated drummer, I think, uh, back in the heyday. And great guitar work. Michael Rutherford's doing his, all his bass and, and the Taurus bass pedals and all that kind of stuff. Dance on a Volcano, great song, which probably even grew to greater heights when they did, uh, you know, play that song live. Uh, number seven, which is probably the first song I ever got into by Genesis, so it kind of has to be on this list, is uh, The Musical Box, again, going back to the Nursery Crime album. Can you tell I'm a big fan of the Nursery Crime album? Uh, very dramatic song, kind of builds in intensity, and uh, a fantastic Peter Gabriel vocal once again. Number six, from what is probably a perennial favorite album from many Genesis fans. I'm talking about the Selling England by the Pound album, Dancing with the Moonlight Night, Moonlit Night, I should say. Um, very quirky, very English 
upbeat. That whole album kind of has that vibe, right? And uh, that's just always been one of my favorite songs on the album. It's, kind of, again, a little mini epic, just very proggy, very English, um, very melodic. Really dig it a lot. Great instrumentation, as always. Coming in at number five, going once again back to the Nursery Crime album, uh, the moody, dramatic, ominous Fountain of Salmasis. Uh, that beginning is probably one of the most haunting intros next to another song, which I'm going to mention in a couple minutes, uh, on any Genesis tune. Again, with those, just, you know, the Mellotron and the Hammond from Tony Banks, just chilling, chilling stuff, and a very kind of coy and mysterious vocal from Peter Gabriel. Great, great stuff. Next up at number four, from the Lamb Lies Down on Broadway album, you were probably wondering when I was going to get there, uh, In the Cage. One of those tunes that, you know, you hear that opening keyboard intro. Awesome. Awesome. Gabriel's vocals are incredible here. Um, just a, a, another cool, again, the sense of drama in a lot of these classic Genesis songs is unmatched in all of Prague, in my opinion. Just the building tension that they can do within these songs, and In the Cage is a perfect example of that. Coming in at number three, once again going back to the Selling England by the Pound album, is the majestic Firth of Fifth. A great song on its own, but made even better by one of my all-time favorite guitar solos by Mr. Steve Hackett. Talk about a spine tingler. That guitar solo is one of the best ever. It's simple. It's got emotion. Swells and just, again, it's not all about the notes. And it's just a, a wonderful lyrical solo that I think, you know, if you were to ask most Genesis fans, what's your favorite Hackett solo? Probably going to go to that one. And if you go catch Steve Hackett out on tour now, they, he plays that song and he plays that note for note. It's just, just great, great stuff. So that's uh, number three. Coming in at number two. And I debated number one and two here. But in the end, number one had to be number one. So number two, Watcher of the Skies from the Foxtrot album. It's funny how the, the Foxtrot album probably is my favorite out of all of them, but I think there's less songs represented on this list from that album. Probably because Supper's Ready takes up such a huge chunk of the album, right? Uh, Watcher of the Skies, again, that amazing intro. If you don't get chills listening to that intro, check your pulse rate, because you're probably not living. It's just a wonderful song. And, you know, the imagery of seeing, you know, if you've seen some live clips of Gabriel singing that song, you know, with the costume, the bat head and all that whatnot, just amazing, ominous, moody, wonderful song. Again, number two, could be number one on any given day, but I think number one is just has to be number one for me anyway. Uh, that is Supper's Ready. Okay, they're a big mammoth epic, one of the greatest long-form musical pieces in all of progressive rock. Uh, just a very, very cool song about the f battles of good and evil and all sorts of things. And it just goes through all these different parts and sections, but it all makes sense. It all just blends very well. Probably Peter Gabriel's best vocal performance on a Genesis song ever. And quite frankly, Phil Collins did a great song with it years later when he took over the vocal slot as well. Uh, some of the most, you know, memorable passages. I mean, who can forget that, you know, dun, 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 dun. I mean, just, it's just, just wonderful stuff. And then that climax. That's, that's what's great about it. Uh, an, a successful epic tune takes you from the humble beginning to an amazing climax. You know, I still get goosebumps listening to Supper's Ready, especially at the last, like, five minutes of the song. I mean, how can you not? Right? How can you not? Wonderful stuff. So that's my top ten. I wanted to give some honorable mentions here because, like I said, my uh, list was pretty lengthy. Uh, some honorable mentions. Uh, the, the title track to The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Great, great song. Uh, one for the Vine. Another really good one from, the, again, that very underrated uh, Wind and Wuthering album. Uh, Squonk. Okay. From the Trick of the Tail album. Get Him Out by Friday from Foxtrot. Really good, 
Charge and Rocker. I like that one a lot. Carpet Crawlers from The Lamb. Beautiful song. That's probably one of the, you know, those Genesis songs that just really kind of always gets me. And I just love the vocal melody on that. Uh, Los Endos from, uh, you know, Trick of the Tail. Great instrumental. Battle of Epic Forest. All right, from Selling by the Pound. Another really great, great tune. Uh, Cinema Show. Okay, again from that same album. How about Blood on the Rooftops? All right, another really great song co-written by Steve Hackett. In fact, there's a lot of great songs on that album. So that's it, guys. That's my top 10 songs from the band Genesis. Make sure you visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're here often on the Mighty YouTube. We've got more of these coming up. So if you like this, let us know what band you'd like me to, to tackle. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.